Hello, my name is Skyla Knudsen. And I'm Lexi Ogdahl. And this is Luke. And this video is for A&P students who are just looking for an easy way to remember the mammalian skeleton. Okay, we're going to start with the appendicular skeleton of the thoracic limb. Thoracic limb is going to be this first front limb here. We're going to start at the very bottom. Now, this front limb is going to correspond to your front limb. The really neat thing about mammalian skeletons is they're easily translatable between species. So, they're just going to be different sizes and lengths on the other animals. So, we're going to compare. This is going to be the horse's hoof all the way up through here. So, down here within his hoof, there's going to be um, your coffin bone is your very lowest bone. That's your first phalanx. That's your very first one up here. Second one is your second phalanx. It's your short pastern, also called. And then there's going to be your third phalanx, and it's a long pastern. And you can see that one right here. And that would correspond right here. Next, these are your proximal sesamoids, also known as the fetlock. And that's going to be your knuckle. Next up, this is the metacarpal. We also call it the cannon bone, and that's going to correspond right here on you. Up here, this is going to be the carpus. We call it the knee, even though it's not the knee down here, it's called the knee on the horse. And there's your carpus right here is your wrist. And then moving up, you have your radius and ulna. It's going to be your forearm right here. And then his elbow is back here. It's kind of hard to see, and it's hard to think of it as so close to the body. But when you be a horse <laughs> like this, <laughs> this is going to be the elbow. So then his humerus is going to go across like this, and that's going to be your upper arm right here. Leads into the scapula, which is his shoulder or your shoulder blade. You can feel it if you go like that. And then that's gonna bring us up to the axial skeleton, which is the main trunk of your body. And appendicular refers to the appendages. Appendage, appendicular, makes sense. And the axle is gonna be your, your main trunk. So we're, okay. we're gonna start up here. The hole at the base of the skull here is called the foragnum magnum. And then your first set of vertebrae are called your cervical vertebrae. And that's gonna be all along the horse here, their whole entire neck. The interesting thing is, he only has seven cervical vertebrae. You only have seven cervical vertebrae too. Same with a cat, dog, cow, whatever. The first set of cervical vertebrae are called the atlas axis joint, also the yes, no joint. You can shake your head no, nod your head yes. Very first one is the atlas joint, very second one is the axis joint, or the axis vertebrae. And moving on down, starting here at the withers, you're going to start with your thoracic vertebrae. On my shirt, if you look back here, in red should be about your thoracic vertebrae on you, roughly. Thoracic vertebrae is going to go down through the ribs here. And then right around here is going to start your lumbar vertebrae. Ever heard of lumbar support on your seat? That's going to be your lower back here. That's going to be in blue. After that, you have your sacral vertebrae, which is pretty much right over the pelvic area. And that's going to lead down until it turns in to the cacoxygeal or, ver or caudal vertebrae. And we don't have very long tails at all, so you're not going to be able to see that on us. But you can see it on Luke here, who has a very nice long tail. And that's, that's the caudal vertebrae. Last, we're going to go through the appendicular skeleton of the hind limb, also called the pelvic uh, appendage. And we're going to start at the bottom of the hoof again. Next, we're going to go over the hind limb, this pelvic limb here. We're gonna start at the bottom again. Down here is gonna be just the same as the front one, pretty much. So your first phalanx, your coffin bone, same as with your toe right here. Next one is the short pastern, same with your toe right here, second phalanx, third phalanx. is gonna be your long pastern that you can see right here. It's gonna be long right there. 
your fetlock, the joint, knuckles on your toes. And then you're gonna go up and this is called your metatarsis. Tarsis is in the back. A way you can remember that is you walk on tar with your feet and you drive a car with your hands. So this then leads up to, and that's gonna be right here on you. So if you put your foot like this and you go up, then here is gonna be your tarsis. Here's the horse's tarsis. See how that kind of looks like a hawk? The tarsus is also called a hawk. You can see that. <laughs> and then moving up from there, you're gonna have your tibia and fibula. The fibula is gonna be the very small bone. And moving up from there, here's your patella. We also call it the stifle on the horse. And um, that's your knee right here, your knee area. Moving up from there, you're gonna have your femur, that long, big, strong bone is your femur. And that goes right in to the pelvis, which attaches to the vertebrae. And that is the end of our mammalian skeletal anatomy. Lexi Ogdahl has already explained the anatomy of the bones from Luke, and now we're gonna talk about the physiology. So to start off, we have three types of bone cells, the osteoblast, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. The osteoblast is a cell that produces bone matrix and provides minerals needed to harden the matrix. Osteocytes, once osteoblasts become trapped in that matrix, they become relatively inactive. They become a regular bone cell, as bone cells surrounded by the hardened matrix. Osteoclast is a cell that breaks bone down and allows the body to withdraw calcium from the bones. Now that we've learned about the three types of bone cells, we will learn about ossification. So the first part of ossification is the osteoblasts secrete the matrix. As seen in this picture, the blue dot is the osteoblast and it's secreting a matrix, the squiggly lines. The osteoblasts secrete calcium and phosphate in the form of a hydroxide peptide crystal. And that's these stars here. And when those stars or the crystals become part of the matrix, the matrix become mineralized. And the mineralization of the matrix hardens the matrix, as seen in this, boat, this drawing. The osteoblasts become trapped in that hardened matrix. And the ossified in the um, space of the ossified bone is called the lacunae. So once the osteoblasts get trapped in there, the osteocytes become inactive, or the osteoblasts become inactive and are called osteocytes. So once the, um, this happens, it becomes an osteon. So this is your osteon, a picture of one osteon. It has a haversion canal which allows like um, your blood vessels to travel through and lymph node vessels. These blue circle things are your osteocytes which are hardened in the matrix. Um, the lines connecting these osteocytes are called canaliculi and these allow um, communication between the bone cells. Um, so, in your osteon, you just have layers of these osteocytes. Down here, we have a picture of how they are connected through blood vessels. So, these, each one of these are osteo osteons, and it shows blood vessels through the canal. But there is also other canals called the Volkman canals, which connect each osteon to each other. And they can have as many connections as needed and it just shows the blood vessels and lymph node vessels running through it. There are two types of bone. There is the cancellous bone and the compact bone. Cancellous bone is spongy and it contains spicules or tapiculae and they just have their like strong structures within the bone that reduces the weight of the bone but still has a very strong formation. Um, within this bone, house bone marrow, very dynamic because it can change its formation of spicules depending on the type of um, work it's doing. Compact, oh, and it's found in all bone types of bone shapes. Um, compact bone is heavy, dense, and strong. When I talked about the osteons, this is where the osteons are found is in the compact bone. All bones are um, compact bone as the outer layer, and like I said, they're formed by osteon. 
Next, we're gonna go over bone shapes. There's long bone, short bone, flat bone, and irregular. Long bones are going to be longer than they are wide, hence the name long bones. They are going to consist of an end called the epiphysis, and that is usually made up of cancellus bone. And then they also have a shaft, which is the in-between part, and that's called the diaphysis, and that is usually made of compact bone. There are growth plates on either end to allow for growth of the bone as the animal ages. And then like, some examples of our long bones would be your femur, your metacarpals, your ulna, or your clavicle. Next we have short bones. Short bones are going to be uh, small and they're found in your carpus and your tarsus. They're like little cubes that you're going to find. And those are just covered in compact bone with um, cancellus in the middle. Next are flat bones, and these are going to be your ribs, your skull, and your scapula back here, your shoulder blade. And basically those consist of two plates of compact bone, and there's going to be some cancellus smushed in between those. Next we have irregular bones, and these just do not fit in any other category. <laughs> They are things like your vertebrae or your patella or your mandible. They're just odd shapes and you can't really put them anywhere else. Those are always gonna have the compact bone on the outside and the, and the cancellus bone wherever it may be for that bone, particular bone structure. There are two types of bone formation. There's the intramembranous formation and the endochondrial formation. First, for the intramembranous, Formation, it is found in flat bone and the clavicle. It is formed by mesenchyme cells, which are stem cells within the developing fetus. Um, they di will differentiate into osteoblasts. They group together to form an ossification center, and this is when they go through ossification, as I explained earlier. Blood vessels will begin to infiltrate and they, this will help form the spicules and the spaces between the bone within cancellous bone. Then we have the endochondrial formation. Um, mesenchyme form into chondrioblasts instead of osteoblasts. These secrete hyaline cartilage matrix. The chondroblasts become trapped within that matrix and begin to hypertrophy which means they begin to grow, and once they hit a certain size, they will die. And when these cells die, this will give an opportunity for blood vessels to infiltrate. When these blood vessels infiltrate, they'll be, begin to bring in nutrients and osteoblasts, and these osteoblasts will stay and begin ossification. So the hyaline cartilage mostly hardens into this matrix, except for two parts within the bone, uh, like long bone. It is the epiphyseal, this is the epiphyseal growth plates that remain, and this just allows the animal to grow as she explained earlier. There, you go. there are two types of bone formation. First, we have the intramembranous formation and the condo con endochondrial. <laughs> There are two types of bone within. How do I say this? How you do I already say this? ruined it. I'm kidding. We're gonna start all the way up here. Yeah. And the opening at the base of the skull is called the operator. No, the. Oh no, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> get edited. <it. laughs> so, I hope I don't get in trouble. I can't do this. <laughs> You're lucky we can edit this yeah. shit. Come on. Um, okay, so now, and... now that we've learned about the three types of ossified. Wrong thing. <laughs> it's in short bone or flat bone, isn't it? Yeah, it's on all the bones. Oh, it's in all the bones. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so and by dynamic that means that it like it can um oh fudge your beans where this is where the mesenchyme form into chondroblasts instead of osteoblasts they secrete hyaline how do i say that word <laughs> how do i say that word <laughs> i tell you hyaline Hyaline, 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 hyaline. Okay. hyaline. Okay, okay, okay. Start the sentence over. Now what? <laughs> I don't know. That's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Now what? <laughs> Come over here. I don't like you.